Good evening, everyone, on this very cold in Ohio, anyway, uh, February 27th, 2013. This is a Aesthetic Impact Informational Services Practice Remote Viewing Target Discussion. And this target was actually worked for last week, but both Lynn and myself, Lynn Buchanan, uh, we both had these terrible coughs, and I called him up and said, if I load everything in, can you do the talking? And I'll be quiet and keep my mic off. And he started coughing back and said, uh, maybe we should just reschedule. So uh, I sent everybody the target feedback photo, compliments of uh, PDP, no, pdphoto.org. There's no text with it, just a feedback image. I have absolutely no idea where this location is, obviously is within the U.S. Coast Guard jurisdiction. There are some palm trees present, so you can see that it is uh, coastal, obviously, with Coast Guard, and um, appears to be a large body of water, and it appears to have a tropical atmosphere with some uh, big hill behind it. Beyond that, I have absolutely no idea. Um, we'll go through these sessions. Uh, hopefully, there's only the four of you. Yeah. And Russ, Russ, I did retask. He said that he would be appreciative of practicing retasking. So we have an extra session from Russ. Um, I'm having a bit of a problem with this, only because we normally just uh, report at the location, and if you were operational, we would retask as appropriate. But I am not seeing a whole lot of strong session results across the board that describe a guy jumping out of a helicopter into a water. As far as actual, um, like the, the man made, the helicopter, the motion, the one biological. And I think that some folks may have been pulled to whatever attracted them in their surrounding area. And I'd like you to think about that. Um, I know Jed has been writing, as Lynn suggested, on the first, on the top of every page that he's on, move to the assigned target and describe. And that way, if you've gotten off target to explore something, which is perfectly legitimate, because they, if, for instance, uh, this was a missing child, the, the famous missing child scenario, and the target was like right next to wherever the missing child was, there's a huge, say, uh, facility where you could, what am I trying to say, golf, um, putt, 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 golf. And maybe there's a pink building with the Flintstones on it. The customer would appreciate it if you included that in your session. Maybe you got pulled to that, you described it. That's very good. It's very useful information, but you need to move back to the assigned target if you got pulled off it. So exploring the details is really important, and hopefully not all of your sessions are 50 pages long, but if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. But what I'm saying is, um, for you folks who are doing fairly short sessions, you need to try and stick with the tasking, which in this case it was just to describe the location insofar as the act, describe the activity. That's where it was, describe the activity. So anyway, I don't usually bring out, I feel like I brought out the wet noodles. And I don't do that real often, but I was kind of concerned. Um, John and I didn't get a chance to look at everybody's session really closely. John has 11 pages. And we're going down through. John, if you want to. Talk, please go ahead because you explain your sessions very well. And looking down through here for the sake of the folks who are not with us, and all your gestalts. 
There you are. Hi. Hi, Teresa. Yes. Uh, uh, this was a pretty interesting target as far as I was concerned. As soon as, soon as I saw the diver in mid-air, I recognized that I did indeed indicate that there was a biological suspended in mid-air, though I was really uncertain as to whether it was human or non-human, so I, I left it blank, actually. Uh, so I, I was pretty pleased to, to see that. Uh, in my past sessions, the perception of water has always been a challenge for me. So in this session, it clearly came through as splashing water. I could hear the sounds. I described it as turquoise color. So I, I was quite pleased with that improvement in my perceptions. Um, looking over the sessions now, I think I rather blended the helicopter with the large ship in the background. I kind of, I think I put the two man-mates together. I'm not quite sure what happened there. But I did describe the one as being submerged. Uh, it is covered by a lot of mist and a lot of water being churned up by the helicopter itself. So, so all in all, it was not not a bad session. I could have added a few more details now that I look at it, but it was not a bad session either. No, actually, um, I'm moving down through this, and you're operational. So, yours is actually looking very in sight. So I'm looking down through this man-made and metallic, plus all your water activity. That's good. Government owned. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And you've got down Georgia, which is a distinct possibility. And let's see. On your map. Try to do a little dowsing here without yeah. a great deal of success. <laughs> what method well, do you yeah. use? Excuse me? What method do you use? On this target, I just try to use my hand and just okay. feel where the activity is, is occurring. Uh, obviously, on this map, I had the wrong hemisphere. OK. Um, go ahead. In, in the past, I've tried using pendulum. I've tried using uh, several different methods. I just thought I did an experiment. And um, one of the things that I'm starting to look at is it is now the end of February 2013. I have a couple of projects that I want to try to get off the ground in the next couple of months. And um, I'm looking to try and get everybody on board with uh, viewing the actual target, labeling session files, and it's going to be what I think I can handle as far as how much extra work I have to do. So for those of you who are present and those of you who may be listening in and can't be with us, um, John has a good example of his summary. He has his gestalts listed. Target has aspects, uh, elements or aspects of man-made water, natural, biological, air, and space. So this is a well-written summary. He goes on to describe his man-made, large, greater than 30 feet, rectangular, dark red, and it's black slitted surface, stationary hollow, and it's, there's tourist attraction ambiance, which, yes, there is. I don't know why that guy's jumping in the water. <laughs> Aspects of distant background, dark gray, rocky, wavy profile. There's natural, it has aspects of rocky black, smooth, shiny, large, submerged mostly. The water has aspects of rough, churning, splashing, deep, turquoise color. And airspace has aspects of outdoors, loud, splashing, sounds of cool temperatures. And the bio-organic has aspects of white, small, above water, suspended in midair. So far, this is great. As 
myself as a project manager and or analyst, I would not have to spend a lot of my time reconstructing John's work so that other people can understand it and anybody coming in just to look at it should probably be able to figure out what's going on on their own with very little direction. Also found were ambiance of Georgia and Mediterranean location, loss of life ambiance. Um, you know what, on your dowsing, nothing like bouncing around here, where did that map go? Uh, probably not. I was going to say, where the heck is Georgia located as far as Russia goes? I wonder if maybe you got pulled to there. Yeah. I think it's probably a little more easterly than where your ex is. I don't know how much more easterly. We can look in a minute. But, um, anyway... As I said, John is actually operational, so this is good. Well, thank you. And, and, yeah, um, I've been crunched really badly here lately trying to get down on paper a project so I can present it to some few people. I don't know if I'll get any funding. And getting a flowchart made up and trying to figure out the actual logistics of how to make it happen, and it's been a very big challenge. And so I'm trying to bring all of you on board. I don't like, as I said, I don't know if I'll get any funding, but if I do, um, then whoever can conform to report reporting and guidelines is going to be critical. So, great example, great session. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, anybody, do you have a gut feel why he was jumping in the water just as an exercise? You think? For myself, yes, I suspect it was just a, a gut action, just, a, just an exercise. Yeah. I can only assume that. But that's when I go out into the different groups and watch participating viewers just discuss and talk and whatever. I mean, to tell you what, they are so nailed and stuck on viewing that feedback picture, and that's it. So that's why I'm trying to reinforce exploring the details, but try and include the main parts of the target in your session. So thank you. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to say. Then, let's see who's next. Um, Russ has let's see, 17 pages, and Russ has his own reporting style, and I told him in an email a couple of weeks ago, I have absolutely, he nails targets, I have absolutely no idea how I've been if we do do something that would include viewers of all methodologies, I have to convert and translate his work into something that everybody else can recreate in their mind and understand. But if you guys go down through this, he's just got tons of perceptions that match. Um, if you take them one at a time. He's viewing by gestalt now and reporting by gestalt instead of like just by colors and by perceptions by and of themselves, um, which has helped immensely. And I'm just going down to the, so I was going to pick out some of the climate for swimming, warm water elements. I have jump in there somewhere. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's Southern California or Puerto Rico the way it looks. I had a feeling from Puerto Rico. Do we we have Coast Guard in Puerto Rico, don't we? I think so. It's our sovereign territory. Yeah. Last I knew. Yeah, there's some pink houses, so that's more uh -huh. that way than uh 
California, I think. Scanning so down here. Was, I thought it was pretty good, considering it's my style. And, but I, I, I got rid of about 12 things that were just. I think I, I went over that re that retask, uh -huh. and I kept beating it till it turned into a vacuum cleaner. I think. Oh, but I had it to start with, and I just kept repeating things about the propellers and the swirling uh -huh. until I destroyed it, actually. Um, right here, the page that I'm on is 5, according to WebEx. Yeah. Um, you've got mountainous and set-aside para-jump. Now, when you write SA, that's setting it aside instead of a stray cat. So, according to the strictest thing, when you set something aside, it means that you're going to ignore it and oh. not let it not let it bother you. But I know you do your own thing. I hate so. I hate the word AOL, so I put SA. I get the the, the AOL term. I just can't uh -huh. find it. I I gotcha. really put that. Yeah. Well, your next line is what I retasked you on, which repeating strobe motion is propeller-like, pedal-like, and swirling. When we get to your retask, I think you took each of those by themselves and I them. Very much. Yeah. yeah. What I'd like to see you do is we were trying to describe the motion that's propeller-like, pedal-like, and swirling. Now, it, I was hoping, and I... I'll get you retask here in a minute. I was hoping to see a helicopter emerge out of that, and well, I don't know if you, you did. Know I, you know what I did? I had a helicopter picture, and I yeah, I, I omitted it when I sent in the last one. And it was, <laughs> and at the top of my gestalt, you'll notice the aircraft on uh -huh. the very top of the gestalt page. Uh huh. The picture there. Yep. So, um, you tend. To, when I retask you, you take every word and, as you said, beat it till you know, it's like a vacuum cleaner. When, and I try, I learned after I retasked you the first time that you don't do anything in a clump. But as you see, repeating strobe motion is propeller-like, pedal-like, and swirling. So it's the motion that we're going there. Maybe I should have just recast you on repeating strobe motion. Hey, yeah, probably uh, I should because you I are so detailed. Yeah. I just beat it to death until I beat, turned it into something else. Well, usually, though, when you beat it to death, you still come out with really good stuff, and you did. It's just I can't do it. I can't record or just talk about it without reading it. Right. Um... Sorry. Next yeah. page. Yeah, so it's pretty good. I didn't have anything really to complain about too much. I had about 12 lines that were totally stinky, including related to a vacuum. The, you know, the sweat part where I broke down the word vacuum? Uh -huh. Actually, the propellers have a vacuum and a lift and a pull. Uh -huh. It works like that, but it's not that, so I beat it to death on that one. Okay, here's your recap. And tell me more, see you um, on your own, tell me more about what is swirling. And on the next page, you're going to take the next word. And on the next page, okay, so maybe between the two of us, I need to say, tell me about the motion. Mm -hmm. And you need to think about the whole thing instead of just the little tiny chunks. Right. If that makes any sense. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. Between the two of us, I think we do good work. But, um, yeah, you know, my, my water is is the model dark blue, light blue dappling. Mm -hmm. Evidently, I give color to water because that's the water. Okay. You know, uh, underneath that long breakdown where it indents. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, sketch yeah. that is upright with vacuum vortex. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Oh, well, down at the end of that group where the dots stop, that's the one. Okay. Yeah, you know, where I call the water with colors rather than. I imagine it is colors when you're in the helicopter looking down, but I was talking about the dots on the windshield and the condensation and things like that, not uh, you know, the color of the water below. So. Okay. Well, 
so it really isn't blue, you know. You're a pretty brave man to taste the carpet area. Oh. Yeah, well, I doubt there's carpet in there. That's one of the, that's one of the 12 bad ones. Oh. That's not a good word right there. I don't think there's carpet in that. I, I looked for the interior of those type helicopters. Mm -hmm. That's not a possibility. But they do hang and mount guns from it. And I had gun powdery, and that could be true at some point out yeah. there for that. Yeah. Otherwise, some of that wood and lumbery, that's some of the shoreline stuff that cut in, got past the helicopter and... Okay, um, here, describe what is pedal like. Um, break down, sketch it, and you've got pedals rotate are arranged as to sweep, propel, oh, and yeah. lift upward in a fan-like rotating yeah. cycle. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, that's spot on. Right there is your... Um, the helicopter is beginning to emerge. Right. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's, the, it's just the vacuum and uh, the other things that I saw creeping in that didn't. You well, know, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, accuracy, you're not. Remote viewing never is 100%, but. And you're getting a ton of good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's like I said, uh, just trying to figure out if I were to present this to a customer, so it makes so because this is like um, well reading a reading a book. If you're trying to describe a tree, how would you describe a tree so that the customer who knows what a tree looks like can reassemble the tree from your words? You see, if I if I'm going to do that, like I was saying, I need a spreadsheet. I need to drag it out. It's yeah. totally different than anyone else's. Yeah. That, that they handwritten stuff where everybody else is abbreviating and drawing it across sideways. Uh huh. I, yeah. I get lost in that myself. I I need some type of spreadsheet to even know. Have you ever done here. that yet? I mean, you've changed a whole bunch since we started. Have you I, done I that on your own yet? Spreadsheets, yeah, but not not here no. You I want to try it? Yep, yeah, I could try it. It wouldn't take any longer than typing it up this way, really. Okay. Um. Yeah. If you want to. But it's going to look. Sure. Give it. It's going to look a lot different than anybody else's, though. Um, I mean, it's it'll just be a change in the style. It'll it'll mm -hmm. still come out the same. I have no problem. You certainly come a ton of you. I mean, your sessions compared to eight, ten months ago, they're phenomenally better. So, yeah, I don't have a problem with you trying to um, develop your own spreadsheet if you're up for that. Yeah, I can do it, but I don't think it'll fit. Well, you like no, to it, sideways we, on this page. We can go to um, my desktop. It'll be fine. Uh, try that one. I've already done the next uh, okay. target, so I already sent it in the even, so I'm not sure. Maybe they won't after that. Sure. Yeah. Um, then dimensions, you've got it rotate, it's electrical, it's upright. Not electrical, you see that's that vacuum. It's electrical in part. But well, that's not, that's don't, not, you know. don't read vacuum into it. I mean, there are electrical components to the helicopter. Oh, sure, yeah. So in your mind, you're thinking vacuum, but mm -hmm. that's you making it a, an association and you're naming it. Right, which I had should have thrown parts out. I tried to, but the word uh, vacuum but, kept tearing me back. Well? Because it's got to do with what I was trying to get rid of. Well, don't throw too much out because it's vacuum. good stuff. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. And then tell me more about the propeller light. Yeah, it's just pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's... And like I said, um, in my mind, the motion is what we were going for. Right. And you, when you view, I'm afraid to put just to tell you to, to describe the motion, 
because knowing you, you've got 5,000 motions going in here and you won't know which one I want. So if I tell you to describe the motion that is like, that's because I gave you your whole line, right. that's the motion that I want. But like you say, you got a ton of good stuff. So, and it all works. I'm just trying to figure out some. Um, So the device creates a floaty anti-gravity rotational speed is very fast. Items become airborne once trapped in its force. Yeah. They're picked up from the ground, gravity, and contained. I mean, this is hysterical. I tried to stay loyal to the para-jumper, and I knew it would be an aircraft from my just thought where I do the airplane. Mm -hmm. But I also had the creepy vacuum working me at the end, so... Yeah. I said, I'm trying to stay loyal to the start. I don't know what that is, and I don't want to get, you know, sucked into the vacuum too much. Yeah. So You've got set aside a side of possible separator or shredder action. Yeah, you got caught in that, I imagine. It. There, yeah. I had something on there about uh, a sense of loss, where probably there have been people lost. Yeah. I thought that, that, that was an exercise also, because I wrote exercise when I, I rewrite these things up to say for myself and that's what I thought it was. That's what I wrote it up as. Well you have um and your sound here is go ahead. Sorry. I wouldn't send the Coast Guard uh five hundred feet from the pier. They'd send uh somebody else, you know. So that was yeah. definitely an exercise. Yeah, good point. Um but the sense of loss, I mean, that's generally associated, well, maybe not. They could be going after drug runners, who knows. They wouldn't have to be going for a missing person. But um, your motors and sounds here would be pretty much fitting. Rotates very fast. And you've got your the top right here. See that? Little airplane I drew at the top, but well, my volume thing is sort of it's at the top anyway. That's an airplane. Okay. I think that's a screwed up helicopter in the middle there, but I, I didn't draw it very clear. And my other one I didn't give to you. Mm -hmm. Definitely that helicopter with that flat tail fin. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, draw I drew someone. Uh, you know, like arrow, like someone arcing, jumping out. I didn't know what it was. And I'll tell you, see this thing I, I've got looks like a table or a plate, whatever it is here I set up. That was at the beginning. Okay. Well, when I went to go look up feedback, what I saw was uh, some people in Nova Scotia were lost at sea and, they were, and uh, they were looking for him and they gave up. And it was a, a, exactly a table with uh, men surrounding it uh, talking about how they weren't going to go back out and uh, that was probably the sense of loss there too. Uh, this thing, I don't know what that is. It looks, it's it's probably the rotor here. Uh-huh. Then the sound, when I heard the sound, I turned the sound into something that seemed like a trumpet or something on the end, but it was really the sound, and I tried to describe it, but... It looks I mean, for all the world, you've got fans on here, Right. looks like the top of a helicopter rotor looking yeah. down on it. Yeah. Okay. The description starts getting away there, a little bit. So... Another good session. We're all working together toward uh, getting on the same page. And by Yemeni, we're going to do some stuff as a group, I think, that's going to get some people's attention. It may take a few months, but it'll happen. Yes. And we lost John. Okay. Looking to see who's still here. All right, and so since your retasking is in there, we don't need to go over that. Um, 
and Jed's not here. Uh, since I wrote on his session some comments, um, let's see how many pages he's got. He can't be here tonight to, because it's an off Wednesday and his mom is sick. So he's got a lot of stuff going with her. Um, he did not do very well. He didn't think uh, he's percentage wise. He didn't get a whole lot of perceptions that matched. And he was getting dimensionals early on. I told him to watch for his AI, as you may have read there. And possibly those are the houses in the background. Um, Then he has down his AI is in front of me, then a stray cat of city, and then heck, it makes it, it feels hectic and looks like, I can't make out that word, but it feels hectic. Does it make him feel hectic? And that's what I'm never quite sure. He and I talk about this fairly frequently. Does the site make you feel hectic? Does it feel hectic? It's your response, your, your emotional response to the target. And then you set that aside so it doesn't hijack your session. And so he had a stray cat of city. And now he's back and he's he's sketching his stray cat, his AOL. So instead of cueing himself and working off, you know, something that he had gotten right before that, he's cued off his stray cat and just because it's a stray cat doesn't mean it's not at the site. And yes, there's a city in the site at the location in the background. So he's sketching his city and he says the purpose of the target is entertainment and it's very organized. Then he gives himself a move command, move back to the assigned target and describe. So we'll see if he gets away from the city and onto the helicopter. And he's still queuing with in phase four work. Up across the top, you've got off to the right, you've got stray cat, and then cat at the signal line. So the level of certainty that you have of what the perception is is at the site is what column you decide it belongs in. So he feels fairly certain. Now he's moving toward tall and square. It's breathtaking and there's a person there and he wants to explore breathtaking. And he's coming over more and more and right worshiper looks like cherished but maybe not. And he's hanging out over in this column a lot. So if it's not there, he's doing a whole lot of castle building. Now we've moved into the SI column and feelings of other people at the site. They're happy, sad, um, contemplative, spiritual. There's a church, stray cat, so now he's sketching the church. Worshiping, spiritual practice, and this is after he gave himself a move command to go back to the assigned target and describe. But he's hanging out a lot in the stray cat, cat column. And I can't tell if there is a church at the site. Chances are that there really is. Now he's back to you know, page 8, and he's given himself a move command to go back to the same uh, assign target and describe the textures. And I told him that's good. You explored the CS which led you to the church thing, but now you've moved yourself back to the assigned target. That's good. So we've got soft, breezy, and warm, a spring day, ocean view. That's good. 
white perpendicular large and yoga retreat so he's off on the spiritual thing again and he's over on the right hand side he's exploring a noun box which is okay especially in phase four you're allowed to do that but now we're down to sketching people um, chanting om so we're off onto the spiritual church thing again and I'm not 100% sure why the guy's jumping out of the helicopter could be a capsized boat with a church group on it for all I know don't know that I'm still looking for the helicopter haven't found it yet move to assign target what do you hear and buzzing comforting ringing shortness of breath verticalness upwards talkative sweet joyful and now we're off onto the right church service and singing but he's still writing them he's not got them in the straight cat column he's got them with certainty that they're there someplace and now we're totally describing conceptual of singing and chanting and people so break I wrote out a little thing here about the things that could be maybe this maybe that but the maybes don't matter unless I'm an actual customer who knows this site and knows what was going on in the background and um, he wrote interim summary and I worked with him he's been doing that lately and it is not an interim summary unless and in a couple of sessions he sent me they didn't all scan this is his summary an interim summary is somewhere in the middle of your session you decide you need to kind of get your wits about you maintain a better sense of um, site contact let you regroup and reorganize a little bit but this is his end session summary this is not his interim summary he did take a break and came back and resumed but he did not do more session work after this uh, target has aspects of man-made biological and ambiance there's a man-made which is tall vertical soft hard square open and perpendicular biological which is happy contemplative worshiping which is in spiritual practice maybe the guy said a prayer before he jumped distinct possibility but I don't know that there's a sound which is ringing singing which is orchestrated and Jed's that's Jed's way of saying organized and chanting which is humming and by the way it's just when you work together with somebody my knowing that about Jed comes from working together with him I know if he says orchestrated he means organized other things that he found at the site were a sense of spiritual tradition and a special place for worshiping and at the end then he picked up his previous or his set aside because those are your real life you just don't want them to interrupt your session and then his typed version and that's it so that is Jed and I also Janine um, yours I couldn't get located I think because of your labeling so hang on let me just switch us over to desktop and we'll find it that way it's easier and Michelle's and I don't know what the deal is with that PDF it's a nice PDF I can't figure out why it doesn't work with the WebEx software okay let's see Shell, you send your stuff to my Teresa Frisch address, and Janine, you send your stuff to my Snowstone address. And it looks like I don't have email up on either one. Uh, 
that's what I'm saying. If we all start, if I start working projects, everybody has got to send stuff to the same address. And we're going to talk about how to label your files here in a minute since I'm on desktop. I did that at the last second. So let's see. that mail. All right. Now you get to see my cluttered up inbox. All right. This is just the fastest here. All right. Now this file, Janine, is labeled scanned RV. If we could, like, if I have three or four projects coming in plus students and um, I'm downloading files like crazy, this it would hopefully be labeled um, target one three get my bifocal on this one three oh two two oh Barlow. And what you do is you right click on it and change it. And I know you're actually you're just learning how to make PDFs, you and Michelle both. You're doing great. So just another little piece. No, I don't want my mail backed up. I want to finish. All right. See if it'll open it up because you'll see I have to do this all over again every time. All right, here is Janine's session, and I haven't had a chance to look at this. Also, trying to do taxes. My evaluation for work was last week, and I was sick. So, my usual excuses. We've got lots of gestalts to work with man made, land, and land. So, you've got repeating, just so you know. Um, if you have repeating gestalts, you can do that for hours. And if they get the, keep getting the same one, you're just asking your subconscious the same question, and it's going to give you the same answer over and over. So good. You got it twice, land, and you moved on. Excellent. Um, actually got some life throwing. you got a bunch of stuff. I'm backing up here. Land, let's see, life, man-made, life, land. Okay, just so you know, your methodology works for you. Technically, in the IAB sequence, you are supposed to touch, you're supposed to describe your gestalt when you touch it. Your it, when you touch the ideogram. So on this very first one, you've got 1A over, down, and looping up and over. Okay, so that's good. Now you're supposed to touch it, and how does it feel underneath your finger or your pen? Then you write that part. That's the feeling component, and you're writing the feeling of the ideogram. And you chose your gestalt for life. That's what you've called it. But underneath your finger or your pen, how did that life feel? Soft or squishy or hard or, you know, something that would be a feeling component and not emotional, an actual physical feel. And don't stand, or don't stand it. You don't have to sit there and do it like for five minutes and think about it and work and, and burn your brain cells. It's like touch it. Think about it a second or two and write how it felt under your pen and keep on going. The next one be man-made. How did that man-made feel underneath your pen or your finger? So lots of gestalts. And land is repeating and life is repeating. So moving into stage two. And anytime you want to talk, you just feel free. Um, and you had an AOL of a prickly, shivery feeling in your lower spine. And your AOL, check this, dropping from a height into a valley with a river. And SA is, um, again, set aside. I don't know in the strictest sense if setting aside means you're going to ignore it or not. You guys always manage to come back. I'm just scanning down through this. Yep, dwelling with question mark. Yes, there are dwellings there. And going to take some more gestalts again. 
I don't see you taking a break, so you must be thinking you need to reestablish or get better sight contact. Lots of colors that are probably appropriate, beige, green, tan, cool, uh, dropping wall-like, and you've got dam as an AOL. There could be a dam up in the hills, I don't know. You've got a large man-made structure. Then you've got feeling of floating, life form, valley, and then you've got parasailing. So there you go. You're, I mean, you're there. Then it's dirt piles or heaps of dirt. Got some building. You feel like you're guessing. Well, that's okay. All of us do. And um, you have in parentheses that you feel like you're guessing. All you have to do is write um, a note there, you know. I understand that uh, you're just telling me that that's the way you feel, but I don't know if that's technically a stray cat or an emotional attractor or detractor, distractor. Now let's see. You've got what looks like a tire swing. Yep. Well, that guy up in mid-air suspended might sort of feel like that, maybe. And park playground, you're kind of getting switchbacks. You've got all this back and forth motion. I don't know that you're picking up on the helicopter. You might be. Because if it's stationary, even though it may feel like it's rocking, that might be what you're picking up on. So, got summary that early perception of life, natural land, and a man made accomplished by shivery feeling in your spine. Seem to be a counter like area with feeding much brown bar stools and cement floor. Perception of something I've never been on the inside of a Coast Guard helicopter. I don't know what it looks like. Perceptions of something earthy with colors of beige, tan, green. And gray, fresh, bright, cool, sense of rushing, flowing, and dropping. And a structure with a drop. We had that helicopter. Biologicals around, feeling of floating. Yep. Perceive a fence along the corner, and it seemed as if there were piles or heaps of dirt inside the fence. That means structures seem to be parallel to a street or horizontal feature. Something like a tire swing felt there might be a park or playground area. And feeling of a switchback somewhere nearby like zigzagging. Well, I've seen movies. And I get my hand here in the little WebEx recording. But how often do you see a helicopter in the movies going back and forth? I know there are skeptics out there that have field day with that. They'll say we're waffling and we're trying to make our stuff fit. But remember, if you were reading a book and you were taking these words and making a picture out of it and look, trying to figure out the motion going back and forth, does the helicopter go back and forth while it's trying to hover in place? And you don't think you had good contact, only a couple of visuals. I think you had better contact than what you think you had. As I said, uh, I'm still working toward getting everybody to get some sketches down so that skeptics who don't think we know beans, it's pretty hard for them to ignore. So let's see, Jeanette, let me bring up where I can see you, or Janine, I'm sorry, I work with Jeanette. Um, Janine, go ahead ma'am, I took your mic off mute. 
What do you think? Any little broadcasting. And pull up the chat. There she goes. Um, I saw the entire swing now the structure. I think it went off on an AOL. Did a session for Daz around the same time. More persons there that fit this session. So you could have been having some bleed through. This is true. Except for if you take these perceptions by themselves, there are going to be a lot of yeses there. We'll see if you have more stuff to type in. Actually, I should be able to stop pulling up emails. We minimize Janine's for a second. I think Michelle is actually in the folder. So that will be pretty quick to find. There we go, and like I said, this PDF's got that little arrow on it, and I don't know why. Maybe if Lynn were here, he could explain. So Michelle has 10 pages. Michelle's just finishing up um, her basic requirements, and she's doing really well with structure. We've been talking about that. She's got sorted out how to move into the different phases, and she and I were talking about, um, she also, just like Jed, that's why I can't, when you get there is the analogy, and it's in Lynn's book, The Seventh Sense. When you do cons consensus analysis, it has a high error rate. So we don't do that. Because you don't, we tend to keep everybody's results. Because if you have five viewers and five of them agree on the spiritual stuff, but the sixth one doesn't, doesn't mean the sixth one is wrong, but there are actually um, analysts who will throw out the sixth one because it doesn't match up with the other five. So we keep everybody's, and now two of you are getting these strong spiritual things, and it's very frustrating to me that I can't prove that this stuff is there. And it leaves us wide open to skeptics because we can, which is actually the root of my problem, which is I know we do good work and they don't want to believe us. That's my thing to deal with. I don't do very well. So Michelle is getting um, prayer flags and Tibetan, probably not in St. Tibet, I can say that. And lots of good perceptions that would relate to that. And she is very perceptive in this way, and so it, I'm very loath to discount what she has to say about this. And holy shifting, stone walled, ancient and historic. And then she and I, I actually talked to Lynn about this, so if the other, if the folks who are listening um, might learn anything. There's a difference between SA, setting aside, and SC, stray cat, which is the same thing as an AOL. If you go up here to the top of your session in the administrative part, an SA 
is the same thing. You list the things that you think in real life are going to distract you. And during, they have the potential of distracting you from your session and not being able to concentrate. So you list them, and then you come down, and in present tense, not that you're going to, you say that you are setting aside the things that are um, potentially going to bother you. So she chose for her potential distractors art projects and friends and family. Then she comes down and writes set aside, and you have to say out loud in present tense each thing that um, I know I'm working on an art project and it may distract me while I'm in session, but that's okay. For now, I'm not worrying about the art project. For now, I am setting aside worrying about the art project. You're not going to set it aside because that's future tense. You're setting it aside. So that is an essay. You can do this in real life, too. If you've got something that is just driving you nuts and you're trying to do your taxes but you can't quit thinking about something, you can actually just write yourself a little note and uh, do it ten times a day if you have to. But So in session, that's what a set-aside means. So I asked Lynn, I said she set aside her hands. And I don't know if she's fully doing a set-aside process with this, if she's doing the mantra and following through and completing it, or if she means a stray cat AOL. So uh, here's another one, death and many underneath and sad. So again, we don't know why he's jumping in the water. And she heard uh, last target she did, Lynn talked to her about, she was writing off on the right hand side of the paper, um, new beginnings I hear said. And he told her if she hears that, to include that in her perception. So she did. And she also put it in quotation marks. And normally when you see that in session, a quotation mark means it's a P7 and it's information that's coming directly from the site. So that's an improvement for her. She learned that the last session and carried it through to this one. And now we have more perceptions. And faint and visited and spartan. And now we have um, a stray cat. Go laugh at me because I know you're sitting there laughing because I can't say that. It looks like and you say it. You can just take your mic off and you say it. it looks like Androcles and the lion. It's very Greek, I think. It makes me think of the Parthenon. So now we're getting perceptions of water that's contained, shrines, spring life, and healing. Traveled as and carried away in reverence. So we're still kind of stuck on the Tibet. Stray cat of jeeps and horses. I don't know if the Dalai Lama is coming in on a jeep or what. Religious, scholarly, dedicated, hospitable, learned, old order. Many males, roby, reds, orange, and yellows. Then we've got a different group of biologicals, which you... Um, for me, the analyst project manager, I know that her perceptions are going with biological one and then biological two. And actually, splitting hairs, but one and two would be included inside your parentheses. But the state of the nation doesn't depend on that. I know what you meant. Then we've got a few farmers nearby, goats, chickens, bossy, controlled, spread out, mostly male, rural folk. Okay, AI. We've been working on her AIs and how to describe uh, it's in front of me, it's behind me, it's beside me. And then she's got it. I'm high up, I'm nervous. So I'm up high. And then I wouldn't be welcomed. It's spectacular and beautiful. So I uh, can only assume that she's up in the city someplace viewing something because it's got an emotional attraction for her. 
either that or she's actually traveled to Tibet. She's taking a little vacation. But sketches are excellent. Don't have anything to do with the helicopter. They may have everything to do with the location. The customer would know more than likely. Excellent sketches of monks. Right down to the praying. We have um, what I almost think looks to be like uh, Hispanic or Spanish type dress culturally on the military folk here which appear to be holding a weapon which would fit in with Puerto Rico but who am I? So there's an awful lot of we don't knows with her session. It doesn't look like it matches up for the most part but again if this were operations customer would still get most of her stuff and if she need if she's appropriate she would be retaxed um, purpose ancient monastery with military outposts nearby where two walls collide worlds collide understood summary target has aspects of land man-made water and biologicals good uh, she's just learning to write summaries too so this is good. Uh, land was high elevation, rocky and steep. Man-made was ancient, crude, stone, religious, small mountain and springs, also a special well of deep water. And biologicals were male, religious, studying, praying and working together. Other biologicals were mostly male, military, um, guarding remote border area. And then down at the bottom, she has in session end and picking up her set sites, which are distractors. So, um, again, strictly from a practice standpoint, remember that you're doing a session not to learn about the target. You're learn doing a session to learn about yourself, what you're doing, what you could improve on, and where your strengths and weaknesses are. So I, Michelle and I discussed her set aside versus stray cat because I can't prove that she didn't build a castle based on Tibet way back where she started for her first phase two. So for all intents and purposes, most of her perceptions some of the ones that maybe describe the location as far as topology and stuff might work. The rest, there's not too many that we're going to be able to confirm. But I never did think it was about the scoring. I thought it was about the learning part and the data person. Like probably just, I was nails on chalkboard to him. So, Michelle, uh, I would advise, like Jed, when you start the top of a new page, move to the assigned target and describe, and hopefully if you've kind of gone off someplace, it'll pull you back. And Janine's writing up their good drawings. Uh, yeah, uh, blow me away. Excellent drawings. So were yours, with, was that Jed? No, that was Jed with the city. And you do good sketches too. So, um, like I said, Michelle, if you've gotten off target, which was the actual guy jumping out of the helicopter, if you write it at the top of the page as a move command in parentheses, that might help. And again, uh, I know that you are very prone to picking this stuff up. So that's why I'm not one to throw this out by any stretch of the imagination. It's just as a practice target, it doesn't work very well. Your um, for spiritual stuff. But as you know, I was put, got uh, an article published in issue seven of Eight Martinis.
of Michelle Beltran who picked up on spiritual stuff in the middle of an Argentinian barbecue and she was right she had like a little target or event within an event well, that's why I am never one to just totally throw a session into the circular file because you've usually done something for a reason and whether or not you stay on target is hard line debate would be a pretty black and white issue. So, um, Michelle, would you like to say anything about this? I'm looking at both typed area and you can speak. I'm going to grab a drink of water. And try not to cough. And that's not going to work. <coughs> Sorry. You don't get to watch me cough. <coughs> And I mute, but I don't have enough time to do that before I cough. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Well, I think that I was not with this target at all. But I think it's a wonderful night for me to see everyone's work. And what I'm very focused on for um, my next session is what you what you talked about at the very beginning about you know stay with moving to the assigned target and just stand right with that I, I think that this was a very painful uh, how do I say you know session for me it was a very I learned a lot about getting off track I think I explained it to you that I felt like a child dawdling on the way to school. <laughs> and um, it's the truth. I, you know, I had a great time, but uh, once again, I, I don't feel that I was with this target at all. But um, I just want to thank everybody, uh, Janine and John and Jeff. That was, that was great. I really learned a lot. But also I was excited because Jed and I, you know, we were yeah. doing our we were doing our little um, you know, uh -huh. spiritual exercises and he he put the sound in for my characters, so I just want to give a shout out to him. <laughs> yeah, he did the own Yeah, yeah. Complete with sketch. Mhm. Mm but um See that big, I am really curious. I want to know what that big white building up is in the right hand corner. Could be a home for all I know, but I just want to know what's up there. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let me just show you guys something. If I can now get this to let me make it go away. Um, when you guys are labeling your, your Word documents or your PDFs, um, I may just pull up a blank with here. Tell you what we'll do. I'll need to make a Word document, and I know that we probably all don't have the same okay. a blank Word document. All right, there's a blank. Um, I'm trying to resize it right now. Wow. Not, there we go. All right. And shrink this a little bit. All right, what we're going to do is um, make a PDF and label it. And there's also a scan file. So here's my Word document, and it's ready. And I'm going to go into my pictures on my computer. If I scanned in, I had a, an image laying here that I used on Facebook as a, a backdrop thingy. So all right, on my pictures, Right. 
under MP Navigator. And this is where my scan stuff lands. So here is my folder for today. And see how this scans through as an IMG. It's an image. It's a JPEG. When you send this to me, it has absolutely no label on it. And if there are five of you, oops, Janine got, I have trouble staying on the central part of the target, but it looks like you were following a signal. Um, Janine, you do good work. You really, really do. And I don't know. You say you have a hard time staying on the central part of the target. All viewers think that they do, they're very doubtful of what they get. And in the end, you do good work. So I can't, I'll probably never get you to not beat up on yourself. But look at your targets and know that you do good work, okay? All right, now at this image, if you'll see that it's scanned in, it's unlabeled, I have absolutely no idea what it goes with, which viewer sent it, which target I need to match it up with. And so I download it, and then I have to open up my email and look to see what you did, because it won't let me change it before I download it. I have to do it afterwards. So then I have to open up my email, look at see who sent it and what you called it, and then go back and try to search in my files for exactly the way you worded it. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to rename it. So uh, I'm just going to call it uh, practice image. All right, and then I come down off it and it stays. If I would not take my cursor off it, the label, the new name would not stick. All right, so it's called practice image, and I know that um, if, if, and I'm doing this like I'm you guys. I'm the viewer, and I'm assembling my session to send in. All right, so if I've got two or three images that I've downloaded, which in your case would be sketches, they're now labeled, and you're probably going to have to, um, you might want to do a one or something that makes, oops, makes sense about your sketch. So, um, you know, if it, if it was a sketch that looked like a, a motion or a wheel or a, a whatever, and you've got four of them, you can label them with numbers, or you can label them some other way that you know what they go with. All right, so now we've got a practice image one. I'm going to close that out. And I'm going to go to my Word document. And uh, here I'm going to write um, Suzy Q target A, target A, B, C, D. And then the target has aspects of land, biological, and man-made. All right, so there's the beginning of my summary. And I go ahead and I put in all my stuff. I'm just, this is just nonsense here. I'm just making. And I put in more stuff. And when I'm done, I want to insert my PDF or my image to send to the Analyst Project Manager. So I'm going to drop down, give myself a little space, and on my program where it says Picture, I double click on the picture, and then I'm going to go to where I know my pictures are. Sorry. There we go. All right. And now I'm going to double click on practice image. And it'll pop it in. Now, if for some reason 
sorry, I was not careful in doing this. It's like sitting slanted on my scanner. So it's really big, and all I want to do is click on this corner here, and I can make it smaller. Normally, you it's only the size, this whole box is only the size of the picture. But if you do this enough, I'm dealing with this whole open box here, so it's not appropriate. But if you keep shrinking the image or the box by clicking on the corner, it will move it up under the words, under that text. So you don't have 17,000 pages to compress. And it gets it all compact into one document. OK, so say we're done. I now inserted my sketch to go along with my text. So now we're going to come up to File. We're going to save as. So I've written, so I want my target to have the same file name that all the other viewers sending in a target is. So this is going to be target A, B, C, D, E, F, Suzy Q. There we go. And you would be target A, B, C, D, E, F, Born Horse, or target A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, Barlow, and so on. So now we're going to save it. So when you pull that back up and save as, yep, there it is. And I don't know what PDF um, program you guys are using, but uh, in my case, I use uh, Primo because it was free. I also have Adobe stuff on my computer, but I just go with this one because somebody told me about it a long time ago. So I'm going to print this as a PDF file. And this is set on Canon, so no, I don't want to print it. I want to choose the PDF printer and hit print, and it takes it a second. And this is very valuable because it lets you compress very large files, and you can send them over the net. And even six weeks ago, I started kind of trying to gently steer everybody toward not sending five or six JPEGs in and you guys are all sending in session PDFs now. I'm really excited about that. And this screen is now up. It says create PDF. If you'll notice, I had the option of setting it on pre-press, which means it can take 20 pages and compress them. So your file it doesn't have as big a size when you're trying to send it over the net, which can be very problematic. All right, so it's set on pre-press, and it's going to um, smash it, more or less. I'm going to create the PDF. Now, see right here, we've got all these extra things in the file name. I am going to make it very user-friendly, delete all the extra garbage, and this file is, and this is what's going to actually show up in my inbox if I send it to myself. It'll be target A, B, C, D, E, F, Suzy Q. All right, now it's popped up. This is my PDF. It saved it. And up here at the top, it says uh, it's a PDF file. It's got target A, B, C, D, E, F, Suzy Q. So I'm going to close it. I'm done playing with the Word document. And yes, now you're going to have two documents on your computer saves for the same thing. One will be a PDF and one won't be. All right, now I'm going to email it to me. Okay, I'm going to pull up a new email. See my attachment. I'm going to click on that. And no, I don't want that. I want, I should be able to come down here and type in target A, B, C, D, E, F, Suzy Q. We'll see if that works. Oops. 
Typos. All right, and we can go open and see if that works. And of course, no, it didn't. All right, it should be in Documents. I can come up here and search Documents. Target A B C D E F Susie Q, and there it is. It's in my Documents. That's where I saved it. I've got both the PDF and the Word file. I double click on the doc on the PDF and you can see it's now attached up here in the e as the email or as the attachment in the email. So I'm going to send it to me going session target a, B, C, D, E, F, Suzy Q. That just tells Teresa that viewer Suzy Q is sending this target back. All right, now, and you can say, hey, here it is. And whatever else is appropriate. Now we're going to send it. Now you're going to see what it's like when it comes to me. Hopefully, like magic, there it is. All right, so when I open this up, I know that Teresa sent the target, and I know from the email label what I'm getting. Now, I've opened up my email, and the file attachment tells me I have target A, B, C, D, E, F from Suzy Q, and when I download it, it comes down here at the bottom, and I open it up, and there it is. The only thing was on this desktop thing, it didn't show you. It will also let me open it, and it will let me save it. It will not let me rename it at the, right now. It's going to download it just like it is at the top of the, of the PDF file. So if one of you labels your stuff, Session A B C D E F John John Smith or just session A B C D E F I don't know who it belongs to and I have to go fishing. So now hopefully if I go in here type in target A B C D E F. I've still got it open, probably. I don't think I did. So it should all be. I don't have typos in there. If I go in here enough places, it's all going to. All the targets are all going to land in the same file. Hopefully that made sense. Anybody have any questions? I know Michelle is just learning um, IT stuff. She, until three or four months ago, really had messed with the computer a whole lot. So she's making documents and learning how to scan and label stuff and find things and copy paste and the whole nine yards. Janine as well. Uh, and Ashley Russ too. So, um, and this is all really important if you're going to be doing anything as far as operational work someday. You have, you have to have a consistent reporting mechanism, and that's what we're trying to work toward in the community. Paul Smith addressed it within the last month, how his group does it, and it works for them. So anyway, that's a little tutorial on how to make a PDF, and I probably should have done that as a separate WebEx presentation, but I didn't. Fine, I'll regret that. But one last time for questions, anybody? Comments? Uh, what do we got?
would it be enough to label the attachment to the email I send with the title of the email, that is target number and my last name? Okay, your question to me comes through in two parts. Your attachment is labeled and your email is labeled. So you've got two things going. And hopefully they're the same. Hopefully that's clearly communicated that way. And both the attachment and both and the email should say target 130220. Barlow. Like this. That way, if you're sending in sessions to Marty Rosenblatt and Dan Smith and um, Alexis uh, and John Knowles, John Knowles even. Um, not too long ago, they were giving him some comments on uh, the remote viewing group about his labeling. And I said, I know what he's doing. He's got targets coming in from three different places because he's working Irva and the New York New York um, group that gets the meetup group and the remote viewing group. So he's got targets coming in from three places. And the way they're labeled, he knows exactly who sent them exactly what group they go with. Right. Your target is labeled scanned RV target. And that's when you right click on it before you attach it to the email and you relabel it. You would right click on it and change the name from right click change the name okay I will try you are so sweet because you've already got the whole first part of the process down and I know you'll get this if you right click on it you change the name of scan RV target to the file name Okay. Well, I think that's all I have. Comments, questions? Nine thirty five. Gee. We get to play hooky for half an hour. I get to do taxes. I don't know about the rest of you. Hopefully you get to do something fun. You are very welcome, and I thank you guys. Um, those really were some good sessions, and like I said, I'm just frustrated about that uh, spiritual stuff. Because if I've got two viewers reporting on the same stuff, that just irks me. Because I know it's there. I think I need to go do penance on this uh, stuff, because... Uh, I have to figure out how to take care of my uh, need to prove you guys right. Because I know you're right. So with that, good night, John Boy. Hopefully you made it back from Las Cruces safely across the mountains. Back to your humble abode. See you guys this next week already, and some uh -huh. of you are already sending in your sessions for the target next week. Right. And I, I appreciate that. Uh, Russ, I'll look at yours, and um, do you want to retask? Yeah, I think so, because it seemed like there were a lot of components that weren't all in the same place. Okay. I so will try to, try to take a look at from it. From the same place. Okay. I'll try to take a look at it. And Michelle, um, you and Janine are both 
welcome to try retasking. It's not difficult by any means. You just need to get your sessions to me so I can look at them. And what I do is, since I would be the same thing as the analyst for the customer, and Lynn always like, you know, that's waffling. It's like, well, Lynn, I'm trying to teach here. So I have to do some leading. But if you guys, ladies, can get me your sessions so that I can look at them, and what I will do, anytime you want to do this, uh, I will try to accommodate you. And we may fumble through the actual review like tonight at the last minute if I'm getting stuff in at the last second and I don't have a chance to look at it, which is about par for the course. But um, just get it back to me. And what I will do is I'll look at your session and I will send you an email back that asks you for more information about a certain thing. So you know you've probably got a hit. And that's okay. It's a little bit of pollution. And yeah, you can't build a huge castle with it. Uh, but what you do is uh, you go back and get site contact again and do another session, write another summary, and send it back. So you, anytime you guys want to practice that, it's fine. Just let me know. And with that, I'm going to shut this down. And we will see you next week. Thanks for coming. Thanks for sending your... Because if you didn't send anything, we would have nothing to discuss.